My name is David Kang. I've been involved in Orientation Week, uh, Leadership and Student Engagement, and Get Out the Vote. The thing that I've gained the most from orientation is that I have grown as a leader. Uh, being put into this position of authority and representing the university has really shown me new ways that I can improve my leadership skills on how to make people feel welcome and feel like they are part of this U Calgary community. My name is Claire Hickey. In my first year, I was involved in the U Calgary Cares Costa Rica program. And that program just helped me to gain a, a sense of self-confidence and really helped sort of launch me into the kind of person I am today. I'm Jared Winslow. I'm a second year Bachelor of Arts student in communication. I'm a born and raised Calgarian, uh, but my family is from the southeastern states in the Choctaw tribe. There are people in my community here that are victims of open racism. While I'm a student here at the U of C, I'd love to be a part of an initiative that helps open the window between non-Indigenous peoples and people who identify as Indigenous, so that everyone who is an open minority will feel comfortable with their way of life. The Native Centre is incredibly welcoming. It's open to people of all faiths and walks of life, and you're always going to find a hug and, uh, and support here. As an incoming student, um, I faced a lot of challenges with mental health um, and through just the, the strong sense of community, the friends that I made, um, the mentors that were available to me through a lot of the student services offices, um, including peers and staff members, really helped me to adjust and to, to build up a sense of resiliency and to be able to deal with those challenges. A meaningful experience I've had with my peer helper positions is that I've got to meet a lot of really interesting people from a lot of different backgrounds. The Calgary community means to me friendships and communities and being able to help each other succeed in whichever way we can. The thing that students can do more than anything else is to reach out and take initiative. Uh, whether that's through going out and joining a club or volunteering or um, looking for services that can help you or that you can help, all of these are different ways that you can make your experience the best possible experience. Getting involved is such a fantastic way to get to meet people, to get to figure out where your interests are and it's just a really, really wonderful way to get to know your community. My experience at the University of Calgary has been incredibly exciting and invigorating and has given me the opportunity to explore parts of myself that I don't think I would have gotten um, any other way. The U Calgary community is absolutely incredible. It's made me feel at home and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Um, should we just give everyone one more minute, Sarah, or should we proceed? Yeah, yeah. I think a few more people are coming in. So um, for anybody who's just joining, we just kind of did a little intro video and then our students will take over. Uh, just a reminder that to keep your mute button on and if you do have a question, feel free to ask, but just try to use the hand raise function that you guys have used on Thursday evening. And that's probably the best way to see if anybody has a question and I'll also keep an eye on the chat as well because uh, Brennan and Athena will be um, discussing their slides and who they are so they might not necessarily see your questions right away. Oh, and there will be a question and answer period. Oh, my alarm is going off. <laughs> There, there will be a question and answer period at the end as well. So if you have any questions, you can ask them. And remember too, at the end, there's gonna be a QR code that you have to scan um, to show that you have attended the session today. And then you'll receive some information in an email as well on that. I think it would be good to start now. I think there's, we have around 20 attendees. So when people start coming in, they can, we'll just kind of come in when you, where you guys are started at, but feel free to start anytime you guys want. Okay, for sure. All right, well, I guess we'll start now. <laughs> 
All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Um, so Athena and I are going to be doing our presentation at U at U Calgary. We're going to really be highlighting our experience in the Community Rehabilitation Disability Studies program. And at the end of our presentation, we'd love to hear any questions you have, and we'll do our best to answer it. So please stay tuned. <laughs> All right, and to start off our presentation, we're going to be hearing from our undergrad program director, Dr. Joanne Rankin, who's an incredible professor you'll have the opportunity to have some classes with. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Joanna Rankin. I am the undergraduate program director um, and an instructor in the Community Rehab and Disability Studies program here in the Cummings School of Medicine at the University of Calgary. We're part of the Community Health Sciences Department and play an exciting role um, in, in this department. So our program, for those of you who are interested in pursuing something like this, really looks at the role of disability, um, disability identity, and how people with disabilities are seen um, and treated in the world. So we work alongside people with disabilities to try and change some of these things. It's a really exciting opportunity as we've seen um, with many of our graduates who go on to work in human and social services, in policy, um, in areas of, of research and academia, to make change around um, the way people with disabilities are, are treated in the world and creating a more inclusive future. So um, it's really nice to see all of you here and, um, and to, be, to see so much interest in this kind of change making for the future. Okay, um, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Athena. I'm currently a third year student um, in the combined degree with a BCR and a BSc in psychology. Um, and Sarah actually mentioned that several of you guys are in the combined majors. So please, at the end of the presentation, ask any questions you have on the combined degree stream, because um, I've been there. And so hopefully I can kind of help you out and provide uh, some guidance. Um, so just a little bit about me. Uh, I want to go to graduate school for clinical psychology. I'm actually currently uh, in my honors program in psychology. I'm starting my thesis this summer. Um, and I also really enjoy taking care of plants. I like bird watching. I like jujitsu. So I have kind of a wide range of interests there. Um, so just a little bit about my experience as a first year. Um, I was exceptionally nervous about the whole university experience. Um, so much so that on the first day of orientation, I got lost on campus and I almost cried. And then I got confused by the UC website in the orientation and I almost cried again. Um, and so if you told me in that moment when I was kind of aimlessly wandering down the hallways that I was going to be speaking at orientation um, on how wonderful the university and the CRDS program is, I would have literally thought you were insane. Uh, but here I am. Um, and the truth is, uh, the practicum and CRDS program interweave to create a really uniquely fulfilling experience as a university student. And so you're not strictly confined to academia or just community work, as the critical thinking and theory of the CRDS program allows you to take an informed approach in your practicum work. And so this is unique to the CRDS program. And it really instills a sense of responsibility to push the boundaries and current norms about how we work with people with disabilities. And so the CRDS program introduced me to my passion, um, but it also pushed me to extend beyond the confines of how society is currently functioning in order to explore more effective solutions for the future. And so you really wanna go into this program looking to relate your practicum experience with theory as I think the real point of this degree isn't to reiterate existing ideas, but it's really to form new connections about and have a meaningful impact on the population. Um, and so I'm gonna pass it off to Brenna to talk a little bit about herself. Awesome, thanks, Athena. So my name is Brenna, um, I'm a BCR student. Um, I'm fourth year and I'm actually outgoing student as I'm graduating this year. Um, but in the fall of 2021, I'll be actually starting the Community Health Sciences Graduate Program as I was accepted in March 2021. So 
some little timbits about me is that I enjoy listening to 70s and 80s music. I love reading classic books and I enjoy photography. So I actually transferred into this program in my third year, so back in 2019, upon graduating from the Occupational and Physical Therapy Assistant Program for Medicine Hat College. Now, like Athena, I recall being extremely nervous about this program as I wasn't really sure what this program entailed. However, eventually I came to learn that it's really hard to define what this program is all about because it offers students just so much. Now, for in my case, this program opened my eyes to the opportunities in which I can apply myself in the helping profession. It also showed me opportunities in which I can enhance my skill set and knowledge of disability and health. The courses I found to be extremely engaging. The professors were extremely passionate and knowledgeable about all the subjects they taught in their courses, as well as to they were always willing to help you out and try to support students in finding opportunities so they may grow. With that being said, through this program, I've learned what it means to be a change maker, how I can use my passion to guide projects such as doing research, as well as how I can make a difference in the disability community. So, <clears throat> sorry. So, uh, CRDS offers an extremely wide range of core courses, uh, but these are just some of our favorites that we wanted to share with you guys. Uh, so, first off, uh, Core 435. Uh, this is a great course. It helps you uh, to conduct novel research from start to finish, including writing an ethics application, getting ethics certification, writing a proposal, creating a survey, analyzing that data and writing a full research paper. And so this was my personal favorite course that I've taken so far, um, just because it really introduces you to the research process and it's great preparation if you wanna pursue research elsewhere. Um, also Core 471 is also a fantastic course. Um, it introduces you to the complex inner workings of families who have children with disabilities and it really explores how we can support all members of the family. Just to add to that, some of my favorite courses so far in the program have been Core 547. And in this course, what I really enjoyed about it is that students have the opportunity to learn about health and disability through looking at it in different models. So for example, we explored the social model of health and disability, the medical model of health and disability, as well as the transhumanism model of health and disability, as well as explored other topics in the disability field that usually wouldn't considered to be related. So if anything, it was a very eye-opening course and I really learned a lot of it. So I think you will to enjoy it. Another course I really, really enjoyed in this program was Core 569. Now the value about this course is it pushes students to think more critically about how we use language when discussing mental health, but as well it provides students with the chance to explore the history of mental health through studying deinstitutionalization de and bad studies. But what I found to be most valuable is that this course flipped my understanding of mental health upside down 360. And as a result of it, I came out feeling more confident in my understanding of mental health, but as well as how I can adapt my approach in a professional setting to ensure that I'm meeting the individual needs of people, especially when you're working in the mental health field. So I really think you'll enjoy this class and you're prepared to be mind blown. <laughs> Um, just to interrupt you guys, sorry, just before you go to the next slide, I just want to point out to the students attending that these are classes you'll take in your third and fourth year. Um, I know, Brenna, that you came in with a diploma, so you already met the requirements of our first and second year courses. I was wondering, Athena, if you could just briefly discuss your experience or what you thought of 205, 207, or 209, just a br brief recap, because these guys will be enrolling in these courses Mm -hmm. this fall and winter. I know it was a little while ago, but uh, yeah, no, if sure there's anything. Um, yeah, I think, thank you. Honestly, the most exciting courses that you guys are going to take in your first year are going to be your practicum courses, almost no matter what. Um, I can't remember exactly what the numbers of those two were, um, but I believe 209 is the one uh, that is the actual coursework. And that's also a great course. It really gives you kind of an intro into what critical disability theory actually is, where it comes from. You'll learn a little bit about uh, Marxist theory. You'll learn a little bit about how uh, CRDS and dis critical disability theory works in the context of critical race theory. So you kind of get a really good overview of uh, what the program's about in that course. So 
it's much more general. As you go on in your, your degree, you're going to get to take a lot more specific courses targeted at certain populations. Uh, 209 isn't that, but it's it's a great overview. It, it really is. I don't know who's teaching it this year. I had Joanna. Uh, she's still teaching it. Yeah. yeah, she's great. You guys yeah. are going to love her. She's very, very engaging. Um, so yeah, you're going to have a great time in 209. I think it's 209. <laughs> yes. And yeah. what did you do for your practicum in 207, if you remember? Oh, I'll talk about that later, actually. Yeah. Because oh, I... Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. All right. No problem. I all jumped right. ahead. <laughs> no, all good. Um, okay, yeah. So, uh, kind of like what I was saying, honestly, the real gem of this program is the practicum courses. Uh, and you guys will get to take two uh, in, in your first year. So that's pretty sweet, actually. Um, just kind of a review of what I did to answer Sarah's question. Uh, in my first practicum, I worked at the PrEP program where I worked with adolescents with Down syndrome. Um, on my second practicum placement, I worked at AFS where I worked with children, adolescents, and adults uh, with, with autism in kind of community settings. And then as my third practicum, I, um, <clears throat> sorry, as my third practicum, I worked at STA where I worked with mostly children and adolescents with autism in a residential setting. And so honestly, kind of a tip that I have about selecting your practicum placement is obviously you want to make a thoughtful choice. So don't choose something that you're going to hate. Uh, don't choose something that's super far away from your house. Don't choose something that has bad times for you. Um, those are kind of the most important things if you ask me. Um, but you know, you do want to keep an open mind. So just kind of speaking from personal experience, when I was in high school, uh, for whatever reason, I didn't think that I was going to want to work with people with autism. I was like, that's not the community that I'm interested in. It's not going to be my, my career path. Uh, and I'm sure that you guys can kind of see where this is going. Um, in my second practicum placement, uh, I found AFS and I was like, this is a great location, great time. I got to work with some adolescents, which I wanted to do. And so I was like, okay. I'll step out, I'll try this population. Um, and it turned into my favorite group to work with. I think that they're such an interesting community, so diverse, um, and it's actually where I wanna take my career now. So I think that just kind of goes to show you that obviously you wanna be thoughtful, but don't bar yourself from certain communities or certain experiences just because you think for kind of some reason you're not gonna like it. Um, another tip that I have is kind of, as you can see from my uh, experiences, uh, two out of the three, and it would have been three out of the three if it wasn't for the pandemic, um, of my practicum placements actually led to paid employment. And so my tip would really be to treat your practicums like a prolonged job interview. Um, really devote yourself to your practicum placements. And these, these uh, your supervisors are looking to hire people for the most part. So keep that in mind, really show your skills um, for example, when I was working at AFS, I kind of noticed how some of the children were really struggle struggling with executive functioning skills, um, but also how there was kind of this false social narrative that people with autism don't experience empathy. Um, so in a couple of my courses, I researched this area further, and I realized that martial arts programs might actually be a really effective way to help develop cognitive empathy skills, particularly for this population. And so I brought this information to AFS. Um, and once my practicum placement was over, I was hired on to develop, organize, and run a jiu-jitsu program. So it just kind of shows you that these places are, for the most part, looking for you to invest in them. Um, and kind of more on that idea of it is what you put it. You get out of it what you put into it. Um, when I was at STA, I developed some folder uh, activities for a couple of the clients to help develop some specific skills. And I kind of left those with them after I, I left the practicum placement. And a couple of weeks ago in one of my psych classes, STA was presenting to us. And in the presentation, obviously not knowing I was in the class, uh, they presented on some of my folder projects. And so it really just goes to show you that you can make a really big impact in these practicum placements if you devote yourself and you actually um, really make the effort with the organization and in, with the community, and you can make a lasting impression. Um, so I'm just going to pass it off to Brenna now, who had a very different practicum experience, but I think, you know, equally as interesting. Awesome. Thanks, Athena.
So considering that I was a transfer student, my senior practicum was my first and only CRDS based practicum, as I did a majority of my practicums in the OTA PTA program back at Medicine Hat College. For my senior practicum, though, I had the opportunity to work with a to work as a student researcher with Dr. Tiffany Bolton, who is another instructor in our program. Um, and I loved every minute of it. Now, prior to getting into research, um, if you were to talk to me, let's say August, what would it have been? Yeah, August 20, August 2020. Yeah. If you were to talk to me then about research, I would have told you no chance because <laughs> I found research to be very intimidating. I also had very limited experience in it as I had only gotten really a taste from it from our main courses, such as Core 435. So I really didn't know what it entailed. And I felt that maybe as a transfer student, I'd be at a disadvantage just because we really hadn't dabbled in academia. But at that point in my life, I, to be honest, I was kind of feeling a little bit lost about what can I do with this degree? What are my next steps? Because a lot of my other friends were already thinking of grad school and I just wasn't there yet. So I decided to speak with Dr. Bolton because she was just someone I had made a meaningful connection with and I thought she could point me in the right direction. And we had a lovely conversation. I told her about a passion I had. And from there, it just kind of took off. And that conversation ended up changing my world as Dr. Diff uh, Dr. Bolton, she heard me out. She loved my passion and she thought this idea could turn into a research project, which I was very scared about because I just said I don't wasn't a fan of research. But she was willing to almost, she, well, she took me on and she gave me that opportunity to explore research. And it changed my world, as I said. Um, through this opportunity, I could develop my own research project related to an area of study I, I was passionate about. I had the opportunity to work collaboratively with a team, learn about the steps involved in a research process, as well as partake in those steps, which was really important for my learning as being a transfer student, as I mentioned, we didn't really get the chance to dabble in academia. So doing this hands-on in a crash course was such a great hands-on experience for me, and I'm so grateful for that. Through working without the semester and her, I had the chance to work on other projects. And in all this big process going on, I realized that, you know what, I think I want to apply to grad school and do research. So I took a chance. I applied last minute. I think a lot of people do it, but I don't recommend it if you have the choice. <laughs> and I end up getting in in March 2021. I was notified and I was very happy as I didn't think this is where life was going to take me, but it did. And I have no regrets. And I'm just so grateful I had that meaningful conversation with my professor. So moving forward, my best tip I can provide you about practicums is make sure you establish those meaningful connections with the people around you, whether you be your peers or your professors, as I can't tell you how much it can pay off in the end. On top of getting accepted into grad school too, I just wanted to mention that through my research, which focused on um, protecting the rights and dignities of mental health service users in Calgary, Alberta, through potentially implementing a different model or approach to care, um, this ended up leading to me getting a summer research internship with the Canadian, Canadian Mental Health Association, which I'll be starting this summer. So like I said, those conversations can take you places. So start having them when you can. Now, we're going to start speaking about option courses. So in my case as a transfer student, I had the opportunity to take multiple option courses to meet my re degree requirement. Personally, I loved every single option course because it provided me with the opportunity to explore subjects outside of the CRDS program. So as you can see, I had the opportunity to take a geology course, a political science course, a Greek Roman studies course, an anthropology course, and each of these courses were so unique as they provided me with the opportunity to make connections and tie what I learned from these courses to the CRDS program. So I got so much out of them. Now, for example, in regards to making connections um, to what I learned in the CRDS program, to the options, when I was taking the geography course, which I absolutely loved, I have a serious case of the travel bugs now, Post-COVID, I'll go traveling. <laughs> but while I was in there, I had the chance to learn about various forms of tourism, such as ecotourism, sustainable tourism. And while I was in that class, I recognized there are some, definitely some gaps and challenges in creating accessible, equitable, and safe travel opportunities for people with disabilities. Like there wasn't really a form of tourism. Of, well, I don't even think there is really an established form of tourism to support just people with disabilities. So that explains maybe why a lot of people don't travel because of there's not there's so many barriers that prevent them from doing so. 
So based on what I learned from that course, I was able to make connections and clue into that because of the stuff I learned in the CRTS program, primarily in core 547. So and through doing this, I was able to create some potential solutions and engage in meaningful conversations with the geography press professor about my specialization. And I think he was kind of mind blown to think that, wow, this person was making connections to their program and could apply it to an option course, which is outside of their realm. So if anything, option courses, they can take you places and they can change your mind about your career path because you know it's made me consider like, hmm, I could do that, I could do this. So I really would recommend that you guys try to take things that either push you outside your comfort zone, something you want to have fun in, but something too that challenges you and just, you know, all of those can contribute to how you see the world and what your next steps will be. Now, Athena, on the other hand, I think this is such a cool experience that she, um, she said that I could chat about was she had the opportunity to enroll into a dance course. And if I was in her shoes, I feel like I would totally embarrass myself in that course because I can't dance. Like, it's just not pretty. So for her, she, um, I'm sure Athena and I shared some common ground that we both would have embarrassed ourselves. In this case, she may have a few times. But what she got out of this course was that she pushed herself outside of her comfort zone. She made new connections as well as to she really enjoyed the experience because in, if you have the opportunity to take these courses, which you may not have later on, why not do them now? Why not take those chances, take those risks? Because that's the best type of learning. So as I mentioned before, take option courses that make you happy and just see where it goes because it might change your mind and it probably will change your world too. Now, another thing we'd want to talk about is life at UFC. So this is, we think, really important to helping you guys understand what the student's experience may look like. Now, obviously, our, this is going to be based on our opinion. So it is biased and you guys will make your own experience at the UFC. But we just want to give, share some important details we feel that will help add to your experience while you're here. So one of the biggest questions we get a lot of times from people is what clubs or other activities are students part of? So once again, from my, <laughs> from my experience, um, I found that it was really important to be involved in extracurricular activities. So in my fourth year, because my third year I really used just to settle in, I was trying to get the hang of everything. But when I transitioned to fourth year, I was made it my priority that I was going to get involved with the UFC community as I just wanted to be part of the community as well as to, I thought having more experience under my belt would benefit me in the long run. So when I was transitioning from third to fourth, I ended up applying to be a member of the Community Rehabilitation Disability Studies Student Association. So I applied, I was kind of winging it, and lo and behold, I was accepted. I landed the vice president um, of administration role, and that's actually where I met Athena, as she was the VP of finance. So you can see networking 101. <laughs> um, and through that experience, I had the opportunity to connect with lots of wonderful um, people in our program who, are, who shared the same passion with me and vision for supporting students. And through working as a team, we were able to um, advocate for students in our program, but as well as make um, meaningful change occur. So for example, during the COVID-19 pandemic, as you guys have experienced um, as effects of isolation, we recognized that this would be impacting students' mental health. So we wanted to address that. And to do so, to increase student engagement, we decided to create a CRDSSA Discord platform. And through doing that, we had a lot of students join in and we have now over a hundred users. And the benefit of doing this is it just provides students with a chance to connect with each other. Even though they may have not met in person to start, it's just a great way to stay connected, especially while we're online. So I was very grateful for that opportunity as it just showed me that, you know, I can be part of those meaningful change processes. Now, in addition to that, I was really trying to get involved too with the city of Calgary as I wanted to be a part of the Calgary community as I had just moved to Calgary in 2019 when I was starting the degree. So I still felt this was out of my realm. So I wanted to be a little bit more connected. So to do so, I decided to start volunteering at the um, Calgary Public Library, the downtown location, as a tour guide. And I absolutely loved the opportunity. And I still do. I'm, it's on hold right now with COVID. But while doing it, I had the chance to connect with community partners, be a part of something that I was really proud of. So 
Um, if you guys haven't checked it out yet, the Calgary downtown location, it opened up not too long ago, about like 2017, 20, 2018. And it's this beautiful building that's founded on the principles of inclusion, diversity, and change. And I loved being a part of that vision and that model. And through my tours, I was able to highlight a lot of the cool little features, such as the accessibility pieces, as well as just the view was spectacular. So being a part of that gave me purpose. And as a student, it also really helped to give, give me some more experience and built my confidence in public speaking. So through getting involved in extracurricular activities, you will definitely have the opportunity for self-development, but as well as professional development. So try to get involved when you can. <laughs> Um, so another question that we get asked quite a bit is just what are some of the fun events at the UC? Um, so the poster pop-up shop is always kind of a hit. It's at the beginning of each semester and uh, you just get to, um, you have access to and can buy uh, just some art to decorate your space, all kinds of stuff. They have anime, they have, you know, like Marvel movies, they have just pictures of animals, some replications of classic art. So it's a, it's, it's, just, it's a really great place to just get some, some art for your space. Um, also, I'm not sure if this would be like fun, um, but you can also donate blood at the UC. That was where I started donating um, and now I'm a regular blood donor. And so I think those two things really demonstrate just the variety of activities at the UC that you, you can get involved in. So I, I would just suggest to kind of keep your eyes open for, for all kinds of stuff popping up. Perfect. Um, another popular question we have is what facilities does the UFC offer? Now, a lot of time I like to flip this question and say, what does the UFC not offer? Because Honestly, it seems like they have everything, and maybe that's just me as a transfer student. I it felt like when I came to UC, I was a small fish in a big sea, but once I started to clue into all the services they offered, I was just blown away. So, for example, the UFC has an incredible gymnasium and recreation facility, so if that's your gig and you want to do morning workouts or go watch sporting events, definitely got to check out the Kinney Swing. Like, it's incredible, and for me... I was able to work out in between classes so and everything was always available like the equipment and such so I really appreciate that because then I could get my workout and then run to class so keep that in mind. Um, the University of Calgary has an incredible library and the services they offer are absolutely exceptional are just wonderful so more or less I utilize them all the time especially when I need help with writing papers citations doing research so if you can make the library staff your best friends because they will definitely help you get through your degree. And to the, the library itself offers some great studying space. So something to consider if you're more, if you're not much of a studier from home and you'd rather be at school and getting your stuff done. The UFC also offers, they have a flower shop on campus. We're right beside transit, which is incredible too. So for me, I live right across the UFC so I could just walk over the bridge. But for other students who live across the city, having the trans station go to the UFC was like a dream come true. So really awesome that way. The UFC also offers quite a few health services. So there's an optometrist on campus. It's where I get all my glasses. They have medical services, dental services, uh, counseling. So there's really everything you need is right there, which is great. There's a pharmacy too. Um, another thing I'd like to highlight is student is University of Calgary offers a great, um, great accessibility services for any students who are, any students who have learned disabilities of some sort. So for me, in my case, I'm a student registered with student accessibility services. And just knowing that they're there and that I can access them practically all the time online or in person, well, post COVID in person, I really appreciate having that resource there for me as it's helped me to be successful in my learning, as well as just nice to know I have a support team there. So those are just some of the services. I'm sure you'll find more once you're on campus. Just wait for it. So now kind of for the question everyone's been waiting for, uh, how's the food? What's, what's that like? Um, so obviously I'm sure most of you guys have heard of Mac Hall. There's lots of good stuff there. There's a new pretzel place that I'm excited to try out. But the most underrated place in the entire university is Bruin Blends in Skirfield Hall. It is delicious. I love their, po their, their yogurt parfaits, their puffed wheat squares, um, their smoothies. I've heard their coffee is great and it is just absolutely delicious. I've been known to run across campus to get it in between classes. Um, so, and it's so underrated. So I would definitely recommend you guys, you guys go check out Brew and Blends. Awesome. Thanks, Athena. Another great question we have is favorite places to go off campus. 
So once again, this is bias, but we're going to give you a good list of places to consider. So right off the bat, just because you're in Calgary, you're right by the mountains, so you got to go to the mountains. <laughs> just because the view is spectacular, having the touristy experience is what it's all about. And just getting out of the city is such a nice treat. So if you have time this semester, you know, going during the summer, winter, any time of year, it's beautiful to go. We definitely recommend that as it's, you know, really good to just have a change of scenery. Otherwise, I already spoke a little bit about the downtown Calgary Public Library, but another point about why I think it's so great, besides the fact I'm a tour guide there, is um, they offer great studying spaces for students, as well as a lot of free resources to help students with their education. So one I can think of at the top of my head is they offer workshops about how to use different software. So if you know, for example, if you don't know how to use Excel, which that was me when I started out, I was able to take a free to, um, two hour workshop and I learned the basics, but it's got me through. So I was really grateful to have those type of opportunities. So something to consider as a backup option. Um, there's also the Inglewood Bird Sanctuary and Athena and I've talked about this great and I still have to go, but we've decided that it's a magical place as you have the opportunity to see bald eagles, swans, wood ducks, and it's just so much fun. So it's such a cool, unique opportunity to pursue, so why not? There's also the Regal Cat Cafe, Nose Hill Park, which offers you the best view of the fireworks during the stampede. So highly recommend going there, as well as to what I love about it, because my family lives in a small prairie town. Nose Hill, it's, you get a wicked view of the city, but also too, you get a taste of the prairies as you can see the crocuses when they're coming up in the spring and stuff. So really nice mixture. And I love that about Calgary, as well as to another place we, um, that comes to mind for us is Griffiths Wood Park. It's just on the edge of Southwest of Calgary. And it offers you a really nice um, foresty vibe if you want to get out of the you know city life. <laughs> and on top of that too, a little E coffee cafe Athena and I had learned about this place through Instagram, but more or less, it's this new cafe that opened. The owner was inspired to open this place because his daughter had a disability, and he wanted to, he had the vision of eventually creating 10,000 jobs for people with disabilities. And for us, we thought that was such a, you know, great, great idea. Why not? Because that's definitely a need in the disability sector. So that's something we really support. And we're all about coffee because we're university students, so why not? Um, otherwise, though, you guys will find your own places um, in Calgary, but these are just a few to consider, especially if you're new to the area. Um, and then the final question that we kind of get asked all the time is just where are the best study spaces um, on campus? Um, and so if anyone tells you the engineering building, they're wrong and lying because it is the absolute worst. It is so bright. There are never spots. It is so loud and it is just terrible and wildly overrated. Um, instead, uh, you should go to the second floor of the education towers. It's quiet, there's always seats open, it's a lot of grad student classes, so there's not kind of that loud, busy hustle and bustle going on. Um, and uh, another plus that I personally take advantage of is that all of the desks have like side panels, and so you can sleep. And I have been known to sleep on campus when I'm exhausted. Um, so if you're ever walking around that area looking for a spot, you will for sure see me there working or sleeping. Um, so I would definitely recommend uh, the second floor of the education towers. So we're just going to go through these quickly so that you guys still have time for your questions. Um, but we kind of know we've thrown a lot of information at you guys. Uh, but these are kind of just our final tips to make the most out of your experience um, in CRDS. So uh, obviously first, this is kind of a self plug, uh, but join the CRD SSA Discord. We have channels for um, each class. It's always active. There are always people there to help. There aren't any profs, so it's really a student uh, focused location. And uh, we'll just post the Discord link in the chat so you guys can just uh, uh, click on that and join right away. It's, it's a really good community. Awesome, to add to that, um, these tips we provide, we were, um we really want to see that these will help to enhance the student experience. So the next one I offer, some people will be like, why? But I'll explain why, because it's really important in my eyes. Um, if you have Instagram, we recommend that you follow the UFC confession page. Now, when I was in my first year, I had heard rumblings of this page, and I was like, what is this? So eventually, like, my friend showed me, and I literally would laugh. I, like, laugh for a good, like, 15 minutes straight when I just started scrolling on the page. 
But what it really is, is just a platform for students to post any confession they have of any matter. They have Feels Day Friday, so usually you get the romantic call-outs, which can be pretty funny at times <laughs> if they don't make sense. So with that being said, um, when we were online this year because of COVID, having the opportunity to access this page, you know, it helped me to feel still a part of the community, like um, the University of Calgary community, but as well as to it also provide me um, well, an opportunity to laugh and, you know, sometimes just question other people's choices. So I think it's something that will add to your experience at the UC. And yeah, I think it'd be funny too if you guys post some confessions. And it's always nice to see if, if when you guys post something, you're like, oh, that's fine. <laughs> you feel like you're so famous. So just something else you can consider doing. Um, and then also kind of as we've kind of repeatedly talked about throughout this presentation, uh, build relationships with your, your professors and your instruct instructors. Uh, they really care in this program. It's something that I've noticed, um, uh, particularly being a double major, I've seen some other programs, um, and, and it's unique to this program. It's, a, it's small, so you're going to be seeing your profs over and over again, and they care. So it's, it's important to engage with them in order to make the most out of your, uh, your, your degree. For sure. And our last piece of advice we want to offer is if you're considering grad school, start applying for research positions early. Now, I understand most of you guys are just coming in. You're like, um, I might not know what I'm doing yet. And that's totally okay. Like, no pressure to do research. But my point with saying that is, even if you don't know right now, which is totally fine because you're just starting out, but later on when you start to clue in, you know what, I think this is my where my interests lie. Or, you know what, I want to try doing this. I, we really recommend that you start looking for those opportunities as early as you can because it's never a bad thing to gain experience um, at any time of your life, whether it be sooner than later. So with that being said, when I started out, um, when I transferred in 2019, research was not on my radar. I was like, mm -mm. so come 2020 in September, when I started my research practicum, I was like, oh, would have been really nice to have some more experience under my belt. But I did get the experience I needed in my practicum itself, but I always think too, if I look back, I would have gone my foot in the door a little bit sooner. So same advice we offer to you guys as it can really help to help for your professional development, but as well as to with graduate applications, as well as to it, it just, it really looks nice on resumes and your professional resumes too. So just something to consider. Yeah, and finally, you know, we're here to help you guys. You can reach out to us at any point uh, throughout your, your university experience. We'll send, uh, put our emails in the chat, um, or you can obviously contact us on the Discord. So please use us as a resource. And we're so excited for you guys to be a part of this community. Um, and, and we want to help you through your experience because we know it's going to be really fulfilling for you guys. Um, and so this is just the uh, QR code, you're going to want to scan that to kind of prove that you were at this event uh, in order to be eligible for the um, Rex Challenge scholarship. So now we just want to kind of open the floor to any questions that you guys might have. Um, ask us absolutely anything, student experience, courses, practicum, you know, just, just have at her. So. Not all at once, guys. I know that I've been told that you guys have some questions. questions about practicums. Yeah, um, yes, they did ask a few and I felt like I did no justice. I was just like, there, question. Go ahead. Hi, um, I actually had a question for Athena because I'm currently waiting to hear if I'm in the second part of the combined degree. I applied for a, just a BA, not a Bachelor of Science like you. That's so hard for me, but I was kind of just wanting to ask like, a bit about like your experience with like both and how you kind of like juggled like because obviously it's a double major right so I was just wondering like what you thought about like the different programs I had to take and just kind of like the course load from both. Yeah um, so they actually they complement each other really really well um, and I think I honestly I think psychology gives you a little bit more um, scientific grounding um, it gives you a little bit more experience um, in, in that realm but CRDS really pushes you to kind of think beyond some of the ideas in psychology. Um, and so they really complement each other. Um, I think in terms of course load, so I think the truth is you're not going to have a lot of options. Um, you'll have a little bit more with the BA, uh, but it's really important that you start scheduling your courses 
like schedule basically all four years as much as you can in the beginning because you just have a lot of courses and you don't have a lot of give. And so I think another key thing is that for some of your like um, option courses in CRDS that are like part of you know, a list of different courses, you can use site courses for quite a few of those. And so make sure that you take the site courses that are going to double count. Um, for example, uh, IO Psych double counts. Uh, it's 321, I think. Um, and it was not a course that I was personally interested in, uh, but it's worth taking because it, it double counts. Um, so it's, wor it's worth looking into that too. I think you're going to have a great time though, honestly. It's very doable. They complement each other amazingly, um, but just make sure you schedule because that's kind of the hardest part. Um, and don't go crazy with when you're doing your practicums that have a lot of hours. My recommendation personally um, is not to do five courses, uh, do something in the spring and the summer to, you know, make up those courses. But, um, and that's kind of for everyone. That's not just for the combined major, uh, but it's particularly important for the combined major because you really need to plan for that. So um, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Also well, reach out to five me. Five years, right? Like you have five years to do the combined degree. Um, so Athena, did you find that having the five years kind of helped with the course load as well since you had to mm -hmm. do both? Um, it definitely did. Um, I, it would not be doable in four years. So the five years is definitely uh, necessary. I think um, something to keep in mind is if you are looking to do honors in psych, I get that this is probably not all of you guys, but um, you're going to want to plan for that if you're doing honors or if you're in any other combined degree or if you just have a really heavy course load. Um, you don't want to do your really heavy course load when you're doing your final practicum in this course. So if you in CRDS. So if you want to do honors in psych, you need to make sure that you do that in a different year from when you do um, your final practicum and your final thesis in CRDS. So, you know, it's doable. Obviously, they didn't make a degree that you're not going to be able to do. So you will make it. You will make it through. You, you will. Yeah. Very good point. <laughs> For sure. Does anybody else have any questions on practicums or other courses or research? Don't be shy. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I thought of another question. Um, because you were suggesting that maybe you shouldn't take five courses when you do your practicums, I was wondering if you have any suggestions for like maybe, I don't want to say like easier courses, but maybe better courses to take in the spring and summer in that case? Mm -hmm. um, well, um, they didn't offer it this year, but often, and now correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah, but usually CRDS has a couple block week courses or some spring courses. Um, that you can take. They didn't have it this year. Are you guys not going to have that ever again? Never mind. <laughs> Ignore that. I know. <laughs> I wish, but no, we're no longer offering spring and summer because we doubled our capacity of class, uh, class okay. capacities in the fall and winter. But All right. option classes to work on. Ignore that then. Uh, some good options that I took in the spring um, uh, education 309 is a really good one. The education courses are great. Um, they're going to review a lot of stuff that it's very CRDS adjacent. So it's not going to be a ton of new concepts. It's very creative. Um, so I would definitely recommend education courses. Also, they don't take up your junior options because they start at 300. So, and you don't need prereqs for them. So I would definitely recommend um, any education courses. Th those are pretty good. Um, Brenna, do you have any kind of easier courses that you would recommend as well? Oh, dance. Dance is also great. If you can manage that, it's most of them are pass fail. So you don't actually even get graded. Um, and so if you can tolerate embarrassing yourself, um, those are also great. Yeah, yeah. Just, and just to add to that, you know, the only two courses that I could recommend would be um, GR, GRST 211, the one I had talked about. Very easy course, super manageable. Like it was, and doing it online was wonderful. So especially too, if you're traveling around in the, in the spring and summer, it was wonderful. Another great course to, um, I don't know if it would count for, well, one I took that I enjoyed was that geography course mentioned. So G-E-O-G-T. 254. Very manageable course again. 
all asynchronous, do it at your own pace. But for me, those were what kind of my GPA booster courses. I, but I really got a lot out of them, even though they were considered easier, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think there's someone else who had a question. Emily, or am I just imagining things? I think we have Anna. Oh, <laughs> I'm imagining things. Hi. Um, so with the COVID restrictions, do you know like how different the practicum experiences will be? Like, will we need to be getting like weekly check-ins or like doing anything extra for like that, I guess, extra safety? Um, I'd be happy to speak, speak on that actually. Like I just finished up, well, and I'm, you know, I was like, did you have any practicums during COVID? No. Okay. Um, I had my senior practicum during COVID. So it really depends on which environment you're working in and how your supervisor wants to go about doing things. In my case, I was online. So we didn't really have to worry about doing COVID checks and stuff. But um, in other cases, I know some other students, when they were doing some more community placements, it was more or less just taking the appropriate precautions. And I think it was just them doing their own symptom check if needed, but it really depended on the workplace requirements. But otherwise, all the practicum sites, we um, I like to think that we establish, they're all very safe. They make uh, student health is definitely the priority as well as to we want to make sure that all students are comfortable, especially during COVID. So if it came down to you went to your placement and you're like, I just don't feel comfortable being in person right now. The, I, I know the supervisors and our, our practicum coordinator, coordinator would make the effort to ensure that you are comfortable, whether it be transitioning to online or just doing something different. So always their priority. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, it did. Thank you. But also, um, what did it look like online? Like, yeah, great, great question. Next. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to elaborate a little bit more. So as I mentioned, my practicum was research. So, and I have, a, I can talk, I could talk about a few other friends because they had different, re different practicums, not research. So in my case, what it looked like is I had to do about 10 hours a week. So how I scheduled it is I did five hours on Wednesday, five hours on Friday. And what really made the difference for me, because I found being online, it was really hard to motivate myself some days because I was like, oh, research is intimidating. But in my case, what made the difference for me was working with my, was working with my friend. She was also doing a research practicum. So we would uh, schedule our days to work together. And that really made the difference. And it helped me to stay on track. And just, I loved the social piece. So that was my research placement. But I have other friends who worked, who did, um, one, one worked at like Janssen Academy and oh, sorry Heritage Christian Academy um, and they did theirs online and their job was to develop um, was to help um, students with disabilities build their confidence for interviewing so like high school students more or less just to get them ready once they're out the door to prepare them so in her case her job was to do she did a lot of online interviews but she would go in person just a couple of times very scattered so like maybe once or twice a month but from what I heard from her, she really enjoyed that setup because she still was able to stay connected with her supervisor. She loved the fact she could still connect with the students she worked with. And she had a really positive experience. So I think when it comes to setting up your practicums, especially during COVID and with all the safety precautions in place, you really do have to, um, especially if you're online, motivate yourself to do the work. But I still found my practicum to be so rewarding. And I honestly wouldn't have changed a thing because I loved the flexibility that I was involved, as well as to the, the, the fact that I could stay connected despite not being in person. So I hope that's helpful. Yes, thank you so much. No problem. And also just to add to that, uh, Patty, our coordinator, like she knows these agencies very well in Calgary. So she will have a lot of conversations before placing any student to ensure what the placement is allowed, what their guidelines are of COVID and what is allowed and what they have in place because they've already been doing this for a while for the past year. So like, like just echoing Brenna on that, like the, the health, your health is the number one priority. So she will have that kind of all figured out after you kind of choose some placements that interest you. So there's lots of guidance along the way. Yeah, go ahead, Anna. Um, sorry, I got another question. So um, Athena said that she got involved in like blood donating. How did she get involved? Like, do you have to go to like a specific center and then like they 
like approve you kind of, I guess? Oh, um, well, so they actually came to the university. It was, I think it was in the, the fall before COVID. Um, and they just had a big stand and I was walking through and they lured me in by telling me that they would tell me what my blood type was. And I was like, okay, fine. So then I, I found out what my blood type was. Um, and then I just signed up there and I know not during COVID, um, there are lots of locations. Um, there's like the locations will come to the UC. Um, but otherwise, like you can actually just, I mean, this is just like a blood donation thing, but you can actually go to, if you just look up, um, blood donation sites Calgary um, uh, or if you even look up blood donating in uh, your app store there'll be an app that comes up and you just register and you literally just go in like there's um, you just book a time you go in you'll have to fill out a uh, questionnaire every time you donate um, just asking you know where you've been if you've had tattoos things like that um, and then you just donate. They're really nice. My favorite part about donating blood is that the nurses are so nice and I love talking to them. And maybe this is just because I don't talk to people because of COVID. Um, but I love going in and talking to them and talking to the people. And, you know, it's, it's a really easy process. Like if you want to do it, I, I would just say download the app and like go for it. Once the, we're back um, on campus, they'll have locations um, at the UC that you can, you know, donate at. So thank you. Yeah. Um, and just as what they're saying too, if you have any questions, uh, you can definitely contact uh, Brenna and Athena and myself as well for any other registration needs. And I will definitely be harassing you guys with more emails. And uh, thank you guys again, ladies, for joining us on this Saturday and sharing your experience. And uh, thank you to everybody for joining on this beautiful day. And please just take a break mentally from school and go out and enjoy the sunshine. Okay, thank thank you. you. Thanks guys. Bye, take care.